Uh, moving to our Safe Water series today. Today for our Safe Water campaign, we'll tell you the story of how some residents of the Upper East region, a town of Polugu, are forced to depend on dirty water from streams and dug out from their household, uh, for their household chores and sometimes consumption. Uh, regional correspondent Albert Sorry follows one of the residents as he goes in search of water for his family. Watch this. Pualugu, a small, decent, and relatively quiet town in the Talense district of the Upper East region. This town is famous for the defunct Pualugu tomato factory and now the failed Pualugu multipurpose dam project. But what many may not be aware of is how difficult it is for some of the residents of Pualugu to get water for their homes. This is the Anogolayu suburb of Pualugu. For the people who live here, getting water to do anything is tantamount to going on a hunt. It is approaching midday and Wilson Abba, one of the residents here, goes in search of water for his family accompanied by his four-year-old daughter. Wilson had hoped that this dream, about 600 meters behind his house, would have some water. But he is not lucky today. The water that used to be here has dried up because there has been no rain for over two weeks. Wilson must go further in his search. Finally, he arrives at another stream a little over a kilometer away from his house. This one contains some stagnant milky water. Not the kind of water you would imagine humans using, but for the residents in this part of Pualugu, this has become normal for them we drink it we use it for cooking we use it for a lot if you have nothing uh, to do about the cleanness of the water you, uh, you all you can see is that it's okay for anugulayu area here i don't think we have a well or borehole our source of water we get is mostly uh, around the stream here the people staying around anugulayu area we are many up to 200 or 300 the animals too come here to drink. Wilson takes the water home to his wife, who immediately uses it to wash their dishes. A lot of people have been falling sick because it's very, very dirty and you can't drink that water. But sometimes when there is no water, you have to force and take it that way. You can get a cholera from there. Stomach pains, you can get it from there. Typhoid, you can get it from there. Sometimes we do move to the police training school to fetch water there. But when you go there and the students are overcrowded, they do not allow us to fetch water there. Many of the residents here also create dugouts near their homes for water. I did it personally because I believe that would serve uh, closer to my house. Lucky enough, there was water. A day it could serve up to 100 people. But the support that will help this make it a permanent wall or a permanent borehole is not there. So when it happens, so the first rain that came washed a lot of dirt into it. So that one is close. Assemblyman for the Pualugu electoral area, Moses Adongo, says... Water scarcity is a problem affecting the entire Pualugu township. The population of Pualugu is within 5,000 to 6,000 as we speak today. And there are over 1,000 there are people suffering on water. Because if you go to Kukong area, they suffer with water. If you go to Akari area, towards the Balungu roads, they suffer with water. 2014 that they came to make community development water. But the supply of the water isn't enough. Now that we are struggling with assembly to see if we can get a borehole. For now, 
the people of Anogolayu here in Pualugu continue to depend largely on the dirty water from their streams and dugouts until an intervention arrives. Albert Sorry, Joy News, Pualugu. That is a very sad situation there. Albert, sorry, who did the story, joins me now via Zoom. Albert, grateful for joining. Um, I mean, that, that's an appalling condition. How long has this been? And, and is there any respite coming to the residents? Albert, you, you might want to uh, unmute so we can hear what you're telling us. So, so I, I, want, I want to find out from you how long this situation has persisted because, look, looking at the water people are drinking, that, that's quite an eyesore. So how long has it persisted and is there any respite coming to the residents soon? Yes, yeah, so from what the residents are telling us, mm -hmm. um, this situation has been there since um, they've been in the community. So it is something... They have lived with for many, many years. Even um, their parents and their grandparents live with that situation. It is something that um, the entire Kualugu Township is uh, grappling with because um, even though they have a, uh, a town water system, it's not able to supply uh, the thousands of people that live in this area. So for the residents who live in this community in particular, and those that are, uh, are a bit far from where the water system is, they have to rely on sources like uh, the streams and the dugouts that we've seen in the story. So this is something that they have, um, you know, dealt with for many, many people. Why, why is it that the country cannot provide them, you know, good sources of drinking water? I mean, if they've, been, they've, they've gone through this all these years, why have we found it difficult to do it? Have you spoken to authorities? What, are they, what have they been telling you? Yeah, so when we spoke to the assemblyman, one of the things he told us uh, was that the area uh, is sort of um, rocky. The topography is full of rocks. So most of the time, when they even get uh, you know, contracts for uh, the drilling of boreholes, when the contractors get to the area, they find it difficult to um, drill to the point where they will hit the water table. Mm -hmm. So normally they have uh, a sort of limit, which you know everywhere they go, they are able. When they once they drill to that uh, limit, they are able to get water. But in the case of Kualugu, most of the time when they drill, they, they are not able to get to the water uh, at that particular point, and so. The, the contract would have to decide that they, they will pay the contractor more so that they drill to where they can get the water. But unfortunately, um, this is not something that uh, they are able to afford. So the few times they've had uh, borehole contracts, mm. when they drill, they are not able to get water. And that is why they have the situation. So if you look at the community that we visited, the uh, Polugu police training school uh, is not far away from it. So sometimes they are able to get water because the training school has a borehole and, uh, which is mechanized. So uh, they get the opportunity sometimes mm. to get some clean water from there. But of course, uh, this is a, a security uh, zone, if you like. Uh, it's, it's a police training school. So not everyone can enter at any time that they want. And even when the uh, students are many, the police trainees are many. Um, they don't give them the opportunity to come in and fetch water. So that that's, that basically explains their situation. Is, is the situation. Is this the same community where we want to put up the Polugu Dam? Uh, no, because uh, where, where the Polugu Dam is, I mean, um, <clears throat> if you talk about the Polugu Dam, it, of course, this, this is the township. Uh, this is... Uh, the Polugu Township, but where the dam is located is not close to uh, where we visited because mm. um, 
the drawings and um, the research that we've done over the time uh, shows that the, uh, the reservoir of the Palugum or Pepper's Dam mm. is going to be around uh, some of the communities in the Northeast region. Okay. So although it is called the Palugum or Pepper's Dam, mm. the reservoir won't be located in Palugum because of uh, topographic issues. So it is not mm. close to this. Now, now I, I, I ask that because I'm, I'm asking myself, can't we find a way to draw the water from a river source close by and process it and send it to this community? Can that option be, be explored? This morning, we had the uh, district chief executive for the Talensee district uh, on the AM show to talk about this story. And one of the things he said was that, um, just as I explained, because of the difficulty they have drilling to the point where they can get water in Kualugu. Mm. Even the, uh, the, the town water system, uh, they draw the water from the nearest town, which is uh, uh, in, in Balungu, if I remember correctly. Mm. Now, th this is a town about two kilometers or so away from Kualugu, and they have to get the water uh, pumped all the way from that place to supply the Kualugu township. But, I mean, um, the assemblyman told us that the, the, rest, the, the population there is about 5,000. So that's not enough to, to supply everyone. And of course, not everybody is close to uh, the, the town water system. So those who cannot get this water have to find other means to get water. Now, one of the things these residents told us was that sometimes when um, they get the opportunity, they have to rent uh, tricycles as, as you are seeing in, 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 on the video. Mm -hmm. to go to where the ball holes are mm -hmm. and then uh, fill, you know, jerry cans and containers and all of that. But that also comes at the price. And some of the communities are not even accessible. So uh, the, the tricycles cannot um, carry the water to them. So that on it, uh, in itself is a different challenge uh, that they have to deal with. And so... Um, now we are getting into the rainy season. So they, you know, they will have a situation where they can harvest rainwater anytime it rains. And that will sort of um, augment you know, or, or give them some source of water for the time being. But once we get to the rainy season, in fact, they were showing me some pictures on their phones of how the dugouts look like before the rain started this year and some of the dugouts that they had collapsed. Where you are seeing them fed is, um, is, is more than a kilometer from uh, if, where the, the, this man lives with uh, his family. So he had to walk all the way, and we had to walk with him uh, to the place. So it, it's a very, very um, you know, sad situation for these residents. I, I know there are a couple of uh, non-governmental organizations that work up, up north. Um, hasn't any of them ventured into this situation to provide them portable water, I mean, however they can. I know that you said that the rocks are quite hard, but aside that, can't we explore any other means? What about rainwater harvesting on a large scale that we could process for these people to have portable water? Yes, uh, these are options, but the, the challenge is, is funding. So um, I'm sure maybe because we are doing the story now, some uh, organizations may come to the aid of the community. Mm. For instance, the assemblyman was telling me that uh, even um, the trainees of the police training school years ago even always had to leave their campus to you know uh, places outside to, to get water. It was about four or five years ago that uh, one of the banks you know supported them with a mechanized borehole in the school, and so. Um, Yes, the, the hope is that once um, we tell this story, um, organizations that will see it may come to their aid and then um, possibly, you know, explore the area to see uh, what kind of uh, measures they can take to get water for them. Because mm -hmm. I was asking him um, that one of the residents said he had made a dugout. The gentleman we interviewed in the story said he created a dugout very close to his house and it was giving them a lot of water. But um, after some time, when the rain came, it, it sort of, there was some sort of landslide. So mm. the, the pit was covered. 
Now, I was asking him if somebody on his own is able to dig to the point where he gets water, mm. how come the, the, the borehole drilling companies are not Cannot. able to do it? Mm. And he said that um, in the water that they get from the daghouse is what they call surface water, which is not what um, they, 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 they get when they drill boreholes. What mm. they get from boreholes, you know, is further, further, further down the earth. So mm. Uh, mm. the two situations are completely different. Mm. But, but once the police... I mean, but just to add that one of the things um, they, they, they were telling us was that if, for instance, they can even get a well, uh, a, well uh, a, a well constructed well, which can give them water all the time, that can also help them. Because, mm. I mean, if you look at that stream, mm. what, he, what they told us was that that place was, um, it, it wasn't initially a stream. It was a place where people come to fetch sand, like Keeper trucks come to fetch sand for construction. And over the time, because of the excavation, it eventually turned into a sort of water body. And so when it rains, water gathers there. And you know, that is where they go to collect water mm. uh, in the absence of the dugout that they had earlier on. Yeah. So mm. um, it's going to take some sort of research, some sort of uh, investigation to know how um, they, they can supply these residents mm. with water. Now, the Polugu community is a community of, of how many uh, residents? Yeah, so the assemblyman told us that the population is about 5,000 people. Wow, that's, and there that's, are, that's a number. There are more than 1,000, sorry? I said that's a number. Yes, and there are, a, a pro, so he says that out of the 5,000, the people who are struggling generally to get water mm. uh, are in their thousands. He, he said about 1,000. Mm. But if you look at how he was, he was even mentioning the number of communities in the area where, um, you know, the people struggle to get water. Mm -hmm. And if you look at it, uh, it, it will be more than 1,000. It could even be about half of the population because mm -hmm. the Polygo Township itself um, is densely populated and okay. there are so many other uh, mm -hmm. suburbs outside of it. So okay. um, that is the situation that we Albert, uh, grateful to you for, for that kindly follow-up because this is quite uh, a situation that we need to find a solution to. Uh, thanks for all the good work you do up there. Albert, sorry, is our man in the Upper East region of Canada.